Hello, this is Eileen, the environmental educator. In this video, we're going to talk about this new subject. Well, it's been around for a while. They're calling it now marine energy. They used to call it wave energy. The talk about this energy has been going on for a while, but now they say that it is about to hit U.S. shores. This is an article from Clean Techna. And it was on MSN today. This article here basically has the same thing here. They say if passed, a billion dollar, of course, a billion, and Congress thinks nothing of a billion, just, oh, well, it's just a billion, pass it. We're in currency collapsing debt, okay? But a billion marine energy bill in the House of Representatives could bring the industry level with wind and solar power. The thing is, the sun doesn't always shine, and wind can be very calm, but the ocean never stops moving. Harnessing the infinite power of ocean waves and tides has been a long, slow slog, but the waiting could be over. Democrat members from the House of Representatives have come up with a billion-dollar scheme to launch the U.S. marine energy industry into the big leagues to take its rightful place alongside the wind and solar juggernauts pushing the renewable energy industry. So, right, one billion dollars. And they say the big question is whether or not the U.S. lawmakers will approve a billion dollar funding package for the marine energy industry. They say that depends on who wins the elections, so hold on to your hats. But in the meantime, it's no surprise that those representatives came from California and Oregon. And they say here that the University of Michigan have already embarked on a significant wave energy assessment for Beaver Island in Lake Michigan. It can happen in lakes, too. If you live near a big lake, you know that those waters are not just glass calm. They definitely get a lot of water moves. <laughs> so it happens on lakes, too. And they say that the project will have an impact far beyond the residents of Beaver Island. The project is designed to be highly transferable with the potential to benefit thousands of islands across the U.S. facing similar energy challenges. They focused on island communities, but this can be put into application anywhere. The Energy Department has organized a network of wave and current testing facilities of various sorts all over the U.S., so they're, they're on it. This has been talked about for a while. It's just no one has put forth a bill in Congress, especially one just another billion dollars. These people in public service truly just don't understand a billion dollars is money America doesn't have. But its advocates say that it has significant advantages over wind and solar. Water moves naturally all around the world and provides a multiple of opportunities to harness energy for our power grid, the Energy Department explained, including interior waterways along with ocean currents. They say that the power coursing through the oceans and rivers equates to nearly 60% of the United States' total electricity need. And see, right now, our electricity needs are less than the demand because it's estimated 40% of electric demand is wasted, <laughs> okay? So, you know, we could do so much if we could just get people to take personal responsibility and just turn off unused electricity. But, you know, getting people to take personal responsibility is just as something that <laughs> don't ask them because they're not interested in it and they will go into a hissy fit if you even be like, well, you could just turn off that light switch when you leave the room. They go insane at the notion of that. It's so sad. The state of no responsibility. They say that wave entitled devices remove land use conflicts from the negotiating table, but they can still run into objections from commercial fisheries and other marine stakeholders. So people don't want the eyesore, but these technologies that harness the energy of waves, they're not 
as visible as the wind turbines. I mean, these, look at, these are lay flat at the top of the ocean. You could miss them from a long way out. They could definitely be a problem to people that navigate the waters, but everything has things that need to be ironed out. And I mean, this does have potential, okay? But again, even if it has potential, it is far out in the future for it to become common application. But they say nearly 40% of the U.S. population lives in coastal communities where marine energy resources are abundant and offer tremendous potential to power our communities with clean, renewable energy. And right here, it says that 80% of Americans live within 200 miles of the coast. So I think everybody pretty much knows that the coastal areas are inundated and it gets a lot more rural inland, but they're just saying the amount of people that are very close to the source of this energy is enormous. And they say that the marine energy industry is coming for your fossil fuels. And there's a bunch of private firms and organizations in support of the clean energy. And there's some of them listed there. And then other supporters cited by lawmakers are all of these companies here. They, yeah, a lot of them, Pacific Marine, Pacific Environment, <laughs> Osco Power, you know, they all have Pacific Energy, Ocean Energy Trust, uh, Pack Wave. They all have something to do with the industry or want to have something to do with the industry. But this is viable. The first onshore marine energy test will be, and they say that there is a startling array of different systems aimed at harvesting the natural movement of water. Yeah, this is what it's all about. The natural movement of water like a river. People harness the energy of rivers. They say that is especially evident in the tidal energy field where designs range from compact turbines directly tethered to the seabed on up to massive infrastructure projects such as the proposed barrage type tidal project in the UK. But it says right here, most of the devices to cross the clean techno radar are buoyed type systems designed for open ocean use providing for the opportunity to piggyback them with offshore wind farms and other marine time infrastructure. So they say that wave energy devices can also be attached to seawalls, piers, and other onshore infrastructure. This has potential. Oh, and we definitely need energy, but right, another billion dollars. We'll see how far this gets through legislation. Stay tuned, people.